Hoverboards. We went from having none last year to now there's the Hendo hoverboard and today Lexus announced one. We're going to look at how they work. I'm going to make something levitate using electromagnetic stabilization. Why? Because science. Now normally I'd wait until the next episode of the Tomorrow Show to talk about this, but as they used to say in the 1800s, one should never wait to discuss hoverboards. Firstly, the Hendo hoverboard. It can only be used in certain locations because it requires the ground to be laid with a conductive surface, such as copper. Under the board are four spinning discs with permanent magnets on them. When these discs pass over the copper surface, an eddy current is experienced, which is a magnetic field in the copper that opposes the magnetic field created by the spinning discs. It basically opposes the very thing that made it, much like every teenager ever. Imagine that the spinning disc is Donald Trump and the copper is a room of sophisticated people. And see, they just, no matter what you do, they will not interact because the sophisticated people are like, get out, you're racist. You're a racist disc. So overall, spinning magnets on a conductive surface, that's the Hendo hoverboard. This brings us to the Lexus board. And wasn't your favorite part of their video how it stopped just as the person was about to put his foot on the board? <laughs> hey Lexus, if you haven't actually made this board, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will be very disappointed. So if you can call me back on 323. They state on the website that the board works by using liquid nitrogen cooled superconductors and permanent magnets, which means we're probably talking about quantum locking and popping and dropping light. We can validate this by the nitrogen fog that's falling on either side of the board in the video. This board will only work on certain surfaces as well, but unlike conductive surfaces, this one needs a permanent magnet surface. There's no moving parts inside. We're completely using quantum locking. This is achieved by two badass pieces of science, one called the Meissner effect and one called magnetic flux pinning. Boom, science. Inside the board is probably something like this, maybe a circular substrate with a very fine layer of a superconductor over it. Now a superconductor has zero electrical resistance, like none. But in order to do that, you need to cool it down with liquid nitrogen to about negative 200 degrees Celsius, or what Canadians refer to as spring. Now here's where it gets crazy. When you take a superconductor and place it near a permanent magnet, it gets trapped within the magnetic field. Quantum locking, the, the superconductor is locked in space and it stays wherever I put it. It's locked above the surface. These boards aren't exactly like we saw in Back to the Future. They both are gonna need very specific surfaces to hover above, which means we're gonna have like hover parks, almost like skate parks. Whilst, yes, it's not exactly what we saw in the film, do not complain. People are being awesome and making us hoverboards as best they can. And I say thank you, well done. Let's make something levitate using electromagnetic stabilization. Does Soylent pay me for this? No, should they? Yes. This works by placing a magnet in a very specific location above a device that has four coils inside. Those coils sense where the magnet is and adjust the power accordingly and then you can make it levitate. Now, this is the DeLorean from Back to the Future. If I place it there, it levitates. I promise you there is no visual effects to this. I have neither the time nor the patience to do so. So overall, the Hendo hoverboard works using four spinning motors that have permanent magnets on it. It induces an eddy current into the copper surface that it's hovering above. The Lexus board uses quantum locking, having superconductors inside the board that are cooled by liquid nitrogen. The board is then locked in place, and this here is a form of electromagnetic levitation. Hit subscribe, go and have a look at episodes of The Tomorrow Show. It's a late night talk show for some science and tech. Imagine Jimmy Fallon, but for science and tech. Go and have a look at it. You'll love it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that seriously is cool. But I also love filmmaking, and that was kind of my dream, was to make films about science. Well, wonder no more, as this project is going to put a life-size pineapple at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs>